Beginning in the late 70s, I became interested in the idea that we could actually bring some of these claims made by cross-cultural healers into a well-controlled laboratory setting. And building on the work of pioneers like Bernard Grad and Graham Watkins, who'd been doing animal studies, we began to look at the possibility that we could design protocols that worked with humans rather than animals. I began to work with William Broad at the Mind Science Foundation in San Antonio, Texas. And for 10 years, we developed a, a protocol and did a systematic research program looking at the possibility that one person's intention could influence another person's physiology, even at a distance. And the way we did this was to set up a protocol whereby we brought a volunteer into the lab. So we were working with healthy people, not sick people at this point, healthy volunteers. Uh, we brought them into the lab and we monitored various aspects of their autonomic nervous system activity. So that's the part of our physiology that functions automatically. You don't have to think about your heart beating for it to beat or your respiration. Uh, and so what we were looking at in these particular experiments was one parameter of autonomic nervous system activity, namely galvanic skin response. This is the skin conductance or the, the sweat in the skin. And what we did is to monitor the autonomic activity of the person, the volunteer, in one room. And then we would bring healers or psychics or, in many cases, the experimenters themselves in another room to interface with the, the distant patient. And what I mean by that is that they were separated in, in two different rooms. And one person attempted at random times throughout the study period to influence the distant person and then at other times to do nothing. And so what we had within, say, a 30-minute period was many 30-second sampling periods. Sometimes the healer was attempting to influence the distant person, and sometimes they weren't. And the goal then was to see if we could average the amount of autonomic nervous system activity in those experimental periods as compared to the control periods. So this experiment involved a within-subject kind of design where the evaluation or comparison was within a person. So we're looking at their autonomic activity when the healer is intending for them and then comparing it with the autonomic activity when there's no such intention occurring. So what we found over a series of 14 formal randomized double-blind protocols is that there was a statistically significant difference between the autonomic activity in the treatment conditions as compared to the control conditions. We used a variety of different terms to describe this research paradigm. Uh, we talked about transpersonal imagery or allo-biofeedback. The notion that in a biofeedback situation, you're actually getting information about your own physiology and then beginning to train it to behave in ways that are health conducive, you know, reducing stress, for example. Well, in these experiments, it was an allo biofeedback in the sense that one person's intention was, was influencing another person's physiology instead of influencing their own. Uh, the term that has stuck more than any other is distant mental interactions between living systems, or DMILs. This is a term that's been picked up and carried into a variety of different research settings across the world. Uh, the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, uh, the University of Freiburg in Germany, uh, the University of Amsterdam in Holland. All of these locations have, have begun to do research on DMILs. And overall, a, a meta-analysis or a systematic evaluation of this particular research area uh, these studies on distant mental influence on living systems has shown a highly statistically significant difference in the states where a person is actually trying to influence another person's physiology and the control conditions. What this says to us is that we now have established a, a proof of principle that in fact there is some kind of correlation between one person's intention and another person's physiology. The next question for us is the so what question of how does this relate to clinical outcomes.